what we have here is an example of a politician doing what most politicians tend to do. They'll use just enough truth in a concept to get you to agree. But instead of meeting you halfway, they'll yank you across the finish line and say, you agree with me now. Would you believe me if I told you that my home state is a hellscape? Probably. Georgia is as Georgia does. Uh, we are we are just constantly bombarded with politicians who really would fit well in Texas, but they're here instead. So I have to deal with them, and I'm not a huge fan of that. But we'll go ahead and get into the fan art section before we talk about that. So the first one we have is from Lady Howell. For the last subathon, uh, we Timercoon has become just the biggest meme. Anytime that I've had to host one, uh, he has he has sh made his presence known. Your subathons will last forever, and you will never be allowed to leave or sleep or do anything once he comes in and asserts his authority. The next one we have is from Lunar Muse Serenity, a side view of one of their many outfits they have submitted to the channel as outfit designs. And as always, it looks really, really good. The last one we have here is from Avalon of Babylon. They said it's a very rough draft. Also, the smiling blue mask is going to be ocean. This looks almost like my character's sub, uh, some side of some sort of Titan, not like Attack on Titan Titan, but more World of Warcraft Titan. Honestly, looks really cool. As always, everybody, if you want your fan art to be shown in a future episode, the best way to do so is to drop it into the fan art section of the Discord. And also, thank you for everybody who does drop their fan art into the fan art section of the Discord. Y'all make it way easier to get through my days, I swear. Alrighty, we have some stuff to get into. Vernon Jones... Uh, who is a Republican who Trump has endorsed multiple times, says that civil rights don't apply to gay people because they can actually change and become straight. It should be noted, Vernon Jones uh, fancies himself to be uh, black Donald Trump, uh, and he made that comment on Stephen Bannon's podcast. He's claimed that civil rights for gay people are not the same because they can actually change. Daring Poem, thank you very much for redeeming your points, friend. Ada, ada, you fucking monster. Let's go ahead and get into uh, the actual words he spoke. Because you don't have to hear it from me, because, I mean, I could be lying to you. You can't yes. tell me Dr. King supported abortions, late-term abortions. You can't tell me that Dr. King did not support traditional families. You cannot tell me that Dr. King didn't support uh, 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 just, you know, enforcing a lot of borders. Uh, civil rights and gay rights, let me tell you, civil rights for blacks and gay rights for gays are two different things. They say it's the same thing. But same it's not time. the same thing. It is that, because you know what, I don't know what you are unless you tell me what you are if you're gay. But when I walk in that room, you can tell that I'm black. I'm black from cradle to grave. Let's not get that confused. But but they can actually change. You, you know, you can go from being straight to being gay to being transgender and all these other uh, genders. But when you're black, I don't have a choice. I don't have a choice. So to compare the two, when did gays come over here and shit? Is that rough? Let's go ahead and talk about that because that is a fuster cluck of things that were said that don't actually mean anything. So are civil rights and gay rights the same thing? Well, yes, duh, obviously. Gay people exist and they exist within the same borders as everybody else. Just like when we say trans rights are human rights, human rights are civil rights, gay rights are civil rights. Now, if we are talking about civil rights in view of the civil rights movement historically in the United States, there might actually be an argument there. And I know it's gonna sound weird to hear me agreeing with him for a moment, but it's only for a brief moment. If the statement were to have stayed at, look, somebody who is gay can be sufficiently in the closet, but you can't be in the closet as black. That statement's true. The, the, the statement itself is actually correct. Now let's move it away from a descriptive claim and let's talk about it as a normative claim. Because when we move it into that territory, now we start to see that, oh, we shouldn't advocate for people's civil rights because they could just be in the closet, which there's more to a statement than that, but let's go ahead and start with that one right there. You can't really 
ungay yourself. You can be gay and date somebody of the same uh, of the opposite gender as you and be miserable and not be attracted to them and hate every moment of being in that relationship. It's a thing you can do in very incredibly almost almost non-existently rare circumstances you can be gay and find yourself in a fulfilling and happy relationship with somebody of the opposite gender as you doesn't happen very often i myself i've only ever seen it once in my entire life and it was it was a a girl who was a lesbian who was dating a guy and i do not know how they made that work but they did it is a thing that can happen, but that's not the conversation here. The probability is not the conversation we're having. The conversation we're having is about whether or not someone should have to stay in the closet in order for their rights to be observed the same way that they are observed everywhere else. Not to mention, being in the closet while being gay, we'll move on to the trans part, uh, creates this weird thing where if you have to fight for your own uh, civil rights, rights like the ability to marry, uh, mind you, in the United States, uh, miscegenation used to be a thing that was illegal. Uh, it used to be illegal for you to actually marry outside of your race in the U.S. To argue that there are not parallels, to argue that they are not the same thing in these regards, is to argue from an ahistorical position. Speaking of ahistorical positions, can we talk about how radical of a person uh, Martin Luther King actually was. For people who have actually sat down and listened to some of his speeches, dude was a flagrant anti-capitalist. Holy shit. For the amount of times that conservatives sit down and bend the knee and worship, well, maybe not bend the knee, they seem to be allergic to that one uh, after a certain football incident. But for the amount of times that people praise the one quote from Martin Luther King that they can fucking remember, judge not based on the color of their skin, but on the content of their character, you start to find other aspects of him. He was very, very radical, especially for his time, especially when we get into, his, again, like I said, his anti-capitalistic rants. Those were part of his monologues, his dialectics, as much as anything else. But those are the parts that get ignored by history because it's convenient to ignore them. But we're not just talking about the ahistorical nature of, you know, what's going on in this uh, this particular video. We're not just talking about that when we're talking about Vernon Jones, Black Donald Trump, as he apparently calls himself. We're also talking about the nature of telling a trans person that they can have all the civil rights that a straight person has, um, but there is one that they might not necessarily have access to then that is the right to transition or the right to experience the correct puberty first. These are things that they don't actually get, but they have all the rights of somebody else, right? Perfect. To give you an example, this is what happens when you tell a homeless person and a rich person that it is equally illegal for both of them to sleep under a bridge. Well, then I guess it's equal, right? But the reality of it is that the rich person isn't going to have to experience sleeping under that bridge. If they do, it's a choice for them. They have the ability to go back to their home, but the homeless person merely has to accept that this is an area of shelter from the rain and wind that they no longer have access to because reasons, I guess. Much the same way, if you try to argue that civil rights are different here, there are rights that cis people just don't need. I, like me, I'm never going to utilize the ability to change my gender. I'm never, when I was a kid, I never needed to utilize access to puberty blockers. But these are things that trans people will have to fight for because these are rights that are unique to them. They're based on their experiences they will have to have. But then we land not only on the parts about closeting and, and being able to function outside of that closet for people, we land on another more important bit here the ludicrous claim that somebody can change this now while it can be said that somebody's sexuality may develop over time you may start out thinking you're straight and then think that you're gay and then land on being pansexual and realize oh i'm actually here or you might 
realize through various relationships, you might think you're gay, you might think you're straight, and then land on actually your ace, or think you're ace, and then find that, well, actually, no, there is one type of thing that you do enjoy, but that's not your sexuality changing. And moreover, it's not you changing your sexuality. It's you discovering where you slot in. It's you discovering where you are there. I didn't find out I was gender apathetic until I used a female avatar on the internet and then went, oh, fuck. I actually don't care about my gender. I don't experience dysphoria in the bathroom but when I'm looking at the mirror, but I don't experience euphoria when I look at my character. So I guess I just don't care. And I don't experience dysphoria either way there either. So I guess I'm apathetic to my gender. It doesn't it's, it's a non-factor in how I operate. Cool. That's all it has to be for me. But it wasn't until I actually found myself in a scenario where I was confronted with that that I could actually discover that. That was likely always the case, but I had just not pre been presented with the mechanics that, that were involved so that I could discover that. Likewise... Someone is not transing their gender 97 times a day, uh, like the dude seems to think. Vernon Jones seems to think that somebody can go from straight to gay to trans, and it's constantly changing, but if somebody thinks they're straight because their society around them is a very heteronormative society, which we are, and then they realize, actually, no, they're not attracted to the opposite gender or sex, they're attracted to the same one. And then they realize, well, actually, yes, I, as a person, may be attracted to females. They then go, oh, but I might also actually feel like I am one. Nothing's really changed there. They've experimented and they've learned where they happen to be, where they are comfortable, where they operate. But they haven't been changing things constantly. From your perspective, from the outside looking in, sure, they've changed it constantly, but that was not an act of will for them. The act of will was the act of discovery. They didn't change shit. They communicated based on the limited understanding of their own internal monologue to you what label they think best described them. That doesn't mean anything functionally changed there. Dark Fangin, thank you very much for redeeming your points for an owl. Oh well. Again, the point that civil rights for black people and civil rights for people who can stay in the closet about it are different in that mechanical nature is true. But the truth of that matter is irrelevant because there are certain civil rights that a trans person needs access to that a cis person who is black or otherwise doesn't need access to. He claims that people can go from being straight to gay to being trans and then points out that he doesn't have a choice about being black. But guess what? People don't have a choice about being gay or trans either. If someone's going to experience euphoria or dysphoria, it's going to happen. They don't really get a, a huge say in that matter. If somebody finds out that they're attracted to a different type of person than everybody wants them to be attracted to, they don't get a choice there either. I understand the position that people like Vernon Jones is trying to come for Congress in my state wants to hold. He wants to hold the position that the left wants to compare being black to being gay. And then he wants to make it clear that that's a lie. MLK didn't fight for the right to read to children dressed up as a woman. He fought for real equality. Don't confuse it. That one's actually a tweet from him. I'm, I'm pulling that directly. I'm not straw manning the guy. This is this is directly from that tweet. But what Vernon Jones doesn't get is that the mechanical nuts and bolts involved in civil rights for trans people and civil rights for black people are the exact same. All of the same arguments that get used against gay people and trans people are the same arguments that got used against black people for the longest time. Really, what functional difference is there between a biological argument for trans people saying that their spot in reality is to be the gender they were assigned at birth and saying that that is, that is biologically necess uh, necessary for them. They must be that way. Versus arguments in the past that black people were biologically predisposed to be slaves and subservient to white people. Are they different arguments? Oh yeah, definitely. 110%. But the mechanics involved? These are the same picture. 
We are doing the exact same thing both ways. And mind you, Vernon, we're ignoring the fact that there are black people who are gay and black people who are trans who are fighting for their civil rights as well. And will likely tell you that no, this is the same thing for them. The fight is no different. I know that there's a certain level of a cr of cringe factor uh, when a heterosexual cis white guy is talking about these issues on the internet. So, hey, if I'm cringe for talking about shit that means something to me, then I'm cringe for it. But at least I'll own it. At the end of the day, what we have here is an example of a politician doing what most politicians tend to do. They'll use just enough truth in a concept to get you to agree. But instead of meeting you halfway, they'll yank you across the finish line and say, you agree with me now. You agree with the thing I said wholeheartedly. And then the social zeitgeist goes for the worst. There's also another aspect of this that I think is somewhat funny to note. When you point out things like Hank is doing here, Vernon, meet Baird Rustin, a gay activist, and also Dr. King's strategist. While he may be right on the one issue that the way civil rights manifests for black people and for trans people and for gay people will be different, it doesn't make any of them invalid and it doesn't make them not the fucking same. But what do you think of the comment section below? I want to know your thoughts on this because from my point of view, this is a fairly cut and dry thing and it's sad and it's local to me. So I'm sure there's going to be somebody in the comments section going, why does this matter? It matters because these are the people that get to write laws that I have to fucking live by. So heck off. Anyways, comment down below what your thoughts are. Hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't already. If you want to support my channel and what I do, I do have to shill for that every now and again still. There's a Patreon down there in the link below, as well as affiliate links and other things uh, that I will not name. But they can all be found there, as well as credits to every artist that works on the show. As always, everybody, thank you all for your support. Thank you for the view. And insert end of video tagline here.